get it going. All right, thanks, Hardy. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this community workshop. In this workshop, we're going to discuss the, um, the Hearn Community Hub Multicultural Center Project. My name is James Jensen. I'm the Deputy Director of Capital Projects Engineering here with the City of Santa Rosa, Department of Transportation and Public Works. And I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight online as we dive into the second phase of this community engagement. Um, in this phase of the project, folks are gonna have an opportunity to provide input and ask questions as we discuss program priorities and design strategies for this community hub. Um, so please chime in. We really want to hear what folks think about this and we want to hear the vision. This is a unique collaborative multi-use site. So there's a lot of potential and possibility. Um, a little bit of background um, to this point in the process, we've reached out to various community groups. We've partnered with Sonoma County Library, who's here tonight, sought guidance from various departments within the city, including fire department, recreation and parks, and of course, our most important stakeholder, members of the community. Um, so we're very pleased that uh, folks are here tonight as we move closer to achieving a multicultural center here at this location that really meets the community's vision and needs. So um, let's dive in. I'll start with some introductions to city staff who will be ready to respond to questions. Um, from Santa Rosa Fire, we've got Deputy Chief Mike McCallum. Thanks for being here, Mike. And Division Chief Mark Lagord. Good to see you here, Mark. I apologize for any mispronunciations. Um, from Recreation, we have Recreation Supervisor Jackie Hammond. And from Parks, we have Park Planner Scott Wilkinson. And with that, I will turn this over to Erica Thibault, Sonoma County Library, Library Director. Thank Hello, you. Everyone. I will step in for a moment. Buenas noches a todo el mundo. Estamos aquí reunidos para hablar sobre el proyecto de Santa Rosa en Hearn. El nombre del um, presentado inicial fue James Jensen, quien es el jefe adjunto de Capital Projects de la ciudad de Santa Rosa. Y También nos gustaría escuchar sus opiniones, sus prioridades sobre el, este nuevo proyecto. Esperamos que pueda participar y ofrecer su punto de vista. A, que, a continuación tenemos a Erika Tibble. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Erika Tibble, the library director of the Sonoma County Library, and I'd like to introduce Ray Hawley next. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ray Hawley, I'm the communications manager for the library and uh, working on this project. Welcome. Mi nombre es Ray Hawley y soy el gerente de comunicaciones del Departamento de Información Pública del Condado de Sonoma. I'm going to jump in really quickly and just ask, since we have a, a relatively uh, small group tonight, does anybody need Spanish translation? If if not, we'll we'll uh, let Elizabeth uh, listen and and participate in English. I'm just going to hand up if anybody needs Spanish. And if you are, okay. and if your camera is off, you can use the reactions button and raise your hand that way if you would like Spanish translation. Perhaps Elizabeth could repeat that in Spanish. Si alguien en esta reunión necesita traducción en español, por favor, utilice el icono para levantar la mano o puede desbloquear su imagen para que podamos ver su su imagen. Si nadie necesita traducción en español, lo vamos a continuar en inglés. Gracias. Thank you, Elizabeth. Jackie, would you and Scott like to introduce yourselves? Hi, I am Jackie Hammond, Recreation Supervisor with the Recreation and Parks Department. Hi, my name is Scott Wilkinson, uh, Parks Planner with the Recreation and Parks Department. Happy to be here um, contributing to this project.
So we're going to continue without uh, interpretation, but if in any time, maybe we just keep checking in as more people may join us. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Don Marcus. I'm a principal with Group 4, and Group 4 is the architecture firm who's working on the design criteria for the Hearn Multicultural Center project. And with the Group 4 team, in addition to Harding Dowell, our project manager. We have Elizabeth, who is our interpreter and a design architect with the firm. And then also Karen and Namrata, who are job captains on the project and will be assisting with technical um, and presentation tools tonight. Additionally, uh, Kitchell is a construction manager on the team uh, with Kevin and Brian being their project representatives. So with that, we're going to just do a few housekeeping overview tools for you. And so just as we're looking tonight, um, first of all, uh, the meeting's being recorded, and I think everyone was notified of that. And so even after the meeting, if people weren't able to attend, they'll be able to watch it on the website. Uh, please just be respectful. Mic's off if you're not speaking. If you would like to speak, please raise your hand. I'll go over that in just a minute. And then um, as you come in, all participants are muted. Um, if you have a question, uh, keep your comments or questions or keep them concise just you know, within a couple minutes. Uh, if we only have this many people, we're going to have lots of attention for a few people with this good. But if more people do join us, uh, we'll just want to be concise with that. Uh, to ask questions, there's two options for that. There is the uh, question button at the bottom, uh, which is the Q&A button. So you can click that. Or option two is the icon that you can click to raise your hand. There is also the optional captions for English or Spanish if that is needed uh, for other participants. So with that, we'll go to the next slide, which will give you just a quick overview of what we're going to do tonight. Um, and so we did have a question uh, about, uh, Wendy, I think you asked if the content of the meeting is the same for the in-person meeting that is on Thursday night. It is, and it's also the same content that is in the online survey. And so we're looking just at multiple ways. We also have a paper survey available at uh, Finley and at the library, just trying to get as many places for people to give us input as possible. Um, we're gonna go over a little bit of the project background, kind of where the project started, where, we started when we started this project, the project overview kind of gives you a quick look of where we're going and then taking any questions that people have before we start our kind of in detail discussion tonight. And so we do have those uh, probably six topics that we want to talk about you talk with you in detail about and get your input and your thoughts on as well as your priorities. And then we'll come back together. If more people do join, we'll have two rooms. Um, if it's a smaller group, we'll just stay in one group and be able to discuss uh, things all together, which will be nice. And so as we go to the next slide, uh, just as we talk about the project background. So last year, six acres were bought in uh, Southwest Santa Rosa, and it's a really fabulous site. It is at the end of Dutton Avenue as it comes into Hearn Avenue. It's a nice central location near schools and the neighborhood is growing. So great location for this multicultural uh, center, which includes many pieces, which we're going to go over into detail in just a minute. Um, once the site was bought, the city started working on the community vision and program for the site. And multiple meetings were held last year. Uh, we've summarized seven of them here that included a block party, uh, community project meetings, a town hall, uh, community workshops, as well as a presentation to the city council in November. And I think this was also followed up with one in January, I believe. Um, Cameron, I'm going to look for a nod for your head there, January or February of this year as well. So lots of opportunities to give input and a really good starting part, uh, point for our project. Additionally, on the next slide, 
Uh, the library's been doing work for their part for the new library that's going to be located on the site in uh, 2021, developing reimagining the library, looking at new library services and models and programs and what should be incorporated in new library. Um, and additionally, the facilities library master plan for Sonoma County was also completed in 2022. And this had many participants, stakeholders, community members, library commissioners, as well as community leaders participate in this and help create the plan for that. Um, from the program and vision work that the city had undergone last year, um, takeaways from that as we are starting on this project kind of identified as values and priorities include safety for all, representation matters, respect for the community, honoring community voice and leadership, and equity and access for the community. And so having this centrally located site is really good opportunity and kind of a launching pad for us to meet these. So that's about where we've been and, and now a little bit about where we're headed and where we are today. So the project um, in, in its multiple phases will be a design build project, uh, meaning a, an independent team of, of of architects and engineers and contractors will work together to to design and build the project all at once. Um, the funding sources include city funds as well as uh, ARPA funds, and the city is actively uh, seeking out uh, grant funding to uh, to supplement those two pots of money. Um, the scope of the project um, is. At sort of at an infrastructure level, an extension of Dutton Avenue uh, into the six acre site. Uh, and then and then major program components include um, a, a multi use path for bikes and pedestrians uh, to connect to the city's existing system, uh, a, a, a new fire station, as we've mentioned, a new library, uh, the community multicultural center, an aquatic center, and then obviously transit access. So we're currently in the conceptual design phase of the project. So starting to think about how the site might fit together, uh, start to think about what program pieces go where, um, that'll transition into what we call bridging documents, which will be documents that then get, get sent out to those potential design build uh, entities to, to do the, the final design and construction. Um, that'll all happen more towards the end of this year and that design build process will follow through 2024 and construction uh, through 2025. As Don mentioned, the, the site's really well located. This gives you a little bit more zoomed out view of, of where the site falls within Santa Rosa. So our orange star is, is our site there. Um, so helpfully located near Southwest Community Park within uh, within shouting distance of a number of, of schools. And then you can see where Colgan Creek winds its way through uh, and under, under 101. And, and that uh, while it's not adjacent to our site, we definitely anticipate uh, future connections to, to the creek and its systems. The site itself is is six acres of former agricultural land, uh, pretty well dead flat, perfect for the uses that that we're looking for here. Um, and, uh, and and the city uh, owns all of that, uh, and we look forward to to filling it now. So, any any questions? Uh, we'll, we'll pause here before we dive deep. But any any sort of questions about the project in a broader sense? Anybody off camera raising their hand? I don't see any. Okay, excellent. Um, so given that we have a smaller group, I think we're all gonna stay together and, and have this conversation at once. And so I'm gonna ask Karen to share her screen um, as, we, as we jump into our discussion topics around specifically the different program pieces and start to talk about uh, some of your priorities and preferences and, and think about what you might use on this site uh, as we develop it out. And that'll help us to, uh, to, to really to help prioritize the design as it moves forward. Karen, you want to click forward? And 
Don, I'm I'm happy to 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 talk through and, and hand, <laughs> so we, and hand off with you. So we have two facilitators ready to talk here. Um, <laughs> so we should actually probably just have Mark talk about the fire station, I think. But yeah. maybe I'll start on this one, and Mark can complement anything that I miss. But we're looking at the new fire station that's really. Um, going to meet the needs of this community and be able to have the response time and kind of a state of the art facility to support all of the needs for the community for these emergency responses. Uh, it'll include the apparatus bay, administrative spaces, living quarters, as well as looking at making sure to incorporate space uh, for a explorers program, which is a really nice uh, community uh, based program that is run through the um, the fire department. Anything you want to share on that, Mark, for the facility? No, um, it's a station right now. We have a station in Roseland, and it's obviously, um, if you've ever driven past it, one of the oldest stations in Santa Rosa. And so it's due for a facelift. So I think, you know, building a larger station that can house more equipment um, to suit the needs of the community. And then again, like you said, one of the biggest you know, bonuses that we'd like to add to this station will be that Explorer program. That's a program that's in development right now. Um, and that is to bring the youth of you know, the community and of Santa Rosa and get them involved in the fire service. See you know, that there's opportunities and to you know, homegrown firefighters is what we're looking for. So we're really excited about that. And, and this is one of the program elements that we're actually not looking for input on. Um, the community um, does need the fire station and looking at the expertise of our, the fire department and the fire, fire programmer to help determine you know, what that is. And so as we go to the next slide, uh, Don, I think okay. Patricia had a question. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Patricia. Yes, I was interested in what the role of the Santa Rosa Fire Foundation will be in achieving the fire station. The role in the, terms of, go ahead. Was that work? Um, I was going to mention, you know, the fire foundation right now um, is looking to enhance the programs that we have already in place. Um, so places where we may have budget shortfalls. So possibly within the Explorer program, things like uniforms um, and things like that for the youth, you know, to really make sure that we're able to, to give them the things they need to succeed and, and stay interested in a program. Um, but as far as the station itself and the personnel will all be provided by the city. If that helps, did you have anything more specific? No, that's good. Excellent. So Harding, you want, to, are we gonna launch the Mentimeter? Yeah, wanna... so so um, this is, a, Mentimeter is a, is a tool, I don't know if any of you have used it before, but um, you can, participate in one of two ways. There's a bit of live polling. So we'll get to sort of see what we think in real time and use it as a jumping off point for discussion. So if you want to point your browser to minty.com or use your phone uh, to uh, to snap that QR code, that'll bring you to our, our Mentimeter platform. Uh, so I'll give everybody a, a minute to, to do that. Um, I'm going to do it and follow along. Yeah, go ahead, Patricia. Um, I don't have a cell phone, so what am I doing? If you'll if you'll point your browser then to www.minty.com, it will ask you for an eight number code, and that one six one seven two 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 five will get you to um, to the same platform.
give everybody just a little bit longer to get all set. And another alternative is actually at the end of the meeting, we do have the link to the online survey yes. where your input can also be recorded. Okay. Anybody need more time? The question when I get there, yeah. I get the word cloud question. Is that supposed to be the first one? It's not. Uh, that'll that'll reset as soon as we uh, as soon as we get going. So why don't we go ahead and, and jump into our first question? Oh. So we'll start with the libraries. You're right on time, Bill. <laughs> uh, so. Um, Obviously, the, the library is going to have some of those what we'll call core spaces. So, so books for all ages, places to read, places to collaborate. We, we, we know that those are, are core to, to any library. And then with the next slide, we want to talk a little bit about, so what, what are those special spaces that, that might set this library apart from others? So those might be spaces for kids to play, uh, spaces where you can access really advanced technology that you might not have at home, uh, places to convene small meetings or, or take a class. Um, so those are just some of those sort of opportunity spaces. Um, and then going forward, Karen, you're in charge. <laughs> So we'll start the poll. Um, and so which of these library services and spaces would you use uh, at, at the new Roseland branch? Um, so this is an opportunity so to uh, to follow along on your phone or on the on the uh, on the web and and log your vote. And if you don't think you're going to use any of these spaces, there is always the option of no preference. So either you all are thinking really, really hard about it or our technology isn't working. <laughs> what do we think? Has everybody logged a vote and we're just not seeing it? Yes, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> then here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna point myself to minty.com and see if we can't see what might be the issue. Why Harding's looking into that, um, you know, maybe we can just talk about and even record with raised hands. Oh, looks like mm -hmm. we've just got live. Yay. Oh, good. Yeah. That's great. So I, I'm seeing a, a, a lot of support for those core spaces. Um, and uh, and then the, the spaces for small meeting rooms. So so I have a question about small meeting rooms. So what's an ideal size when you think about about a meeting that you might want to have or, or a reason that you might want to host a meeting at the library what are some uh what are some of the things that you might use that space for and small group here it's all just us feel free to speak freely harding if i could add a yeah clause right. to that question Please. um not only what would you use it for, but how many people would be in your meeting? Yeah, Paula. Right now, I am looking for a space to rent for an Al-Anon meeting. 
plan um, right now, it would be small, um, probably, you know, five to eight people, but hopefully it would, you know, grow to maybe 20 or 25. So that's what I thought of when I saw a small meeting room. I thought, oh, that'd be wonderful because we want to yeah. stay on the west side of Santa Rosa. <laughs> that's perfect. Thanks for that, Paul. Anything else here that really that 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 jumped out that 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 felt particularly useful to you or or um, or your family? Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, oh yeah, Patricia. Sorry. Um, yeah, there's quite a few organizing projects, voter organizing, uh, community resource organizing, in um, in Roseland, and there really isn't a lot of meeting space. So I would say you'd want something for about 20 people. Uh, minimum because I think there's just quite a lot of activity going on and and not enough places to have them happen um, in the Roseland area. Love it. That's great. Anybody else? That's great. Anything else that you you all, uh, Erica or or Ray, wanted wanted to ask the group that we've got? Awesome. Then, then I think we'll move to the next. So this is a really a really key question for for this site, um, which is what is the tenor and type of of the, the community and recreation space that we might build on, on this site for Roseland. Um, on one side, we have option one, the community hall, uh, which is sort of a catch all term. But you can see in the, the image there, it, it's a space that might have a little bit cleaner finishes, might be best suited for community events, might have a stage at one end, you know, a, a, an acoustic setup, a, an audiovisual setup. Um, and then on the other side, we're terming the community multi sports and events. So would be able to accommodate all the same kinds of events, I think that option one would have with the added benefit of sports. Um, so this is really not, not, not to pit the sports people against the not sports people, uh, but really thinking about what this community would benefit best from. Um, and, and so uh, and, and anything else that, that, um, that Jackie or Scott, you wanted to, to add to that conversation? Um, I, think, I don't think, oh, um, go ahead, Jackie. Yeah, and so the only, thing I would add to what Harding just um, offered is the site is six acres, you know, so it's not like we have 60 acres. And so there are constraints we're working with, making sure we have the adequate parking and size. And so this, there's two questions in the survey where we're asking this um, you know, select one, what is your preference between the two? And it's, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of the site constraints and the size of the site that's um, kind of asking us to ask the community, what is the priority for you? And Pamela has her hand raised. Yeah. Yeah, I and maybe I am distracted, but I was unclear whether this is in the Multicultural Center or the library. It's the Multicultural Center, but we are looking at the site as a campus. And so, right. yeah. So my answer really makes a big difference because I don't know what kind of large spaces for programming are in the library. So there definitely will be a program space in the library um, and it will be, um, I don't know that we have the prescribed exact square footage of the space, but probably enough to accommodate 50 to 75 people, Ray it's and not Erica. Big. Yeah. Not big. Not, not a celebration space like this event space that we're looking at. Um, between this option. So more your typical library program room, and they may come over here and borrow one of these rooms if it's their large summer reading program kickoff or they're doing a large event or something like that. And is there enough room on the campus to have an outdoor amphitheater, like a garden amphitheater where a performance might take place? Yes, you are transitioning us to the future questions coming in this discussion tonight, Pamela, <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> I have to know what else yeah. is there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there is some space on the site for outdoor space. Again, it's 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 going to be um, it's going to be a beautifully designed site, but it's it's going to be 
not ample outdoor, you know what I'm saying? It, it, six acres is not, ideally we would have had 12 acres for this, but six acres is what we've got, it's great location. And, and there's just some parameters that we have to work within, so. And the new boys and girls club gym isn't accessible to adults, right? So this would be filling a need for adult sports. Yeah, I don't know if Jackie wants to chime in there from recreation at all. Um, sure. um, just to clarify, yeah. So um, I, I'm not certain about the restrictions on the Boys and Girls Club, um, but no, it wouldn't be uh, the Recreation and Parks Department intention to use um, a multi purpose uh, sports facility only for adults. It would definitely, uh, it would definitely encompass youth sports. Um, currently, we don't have a gymnasium. The Recreation and Parks Department doesn't. Um, so it would be used in a, in a variety of ways that we have, you know, obviously this kind of envisioning what the space may be, um, you know, uh, youth futsal, um, you know, uh, badminton, volleyball, basketball, um, it would be our intention, um, you know, or what we've discussed, obviously, based on, it's still all just a dream, right? Um, to, you know, still have the community and cultural events. We're looking uh, in, in that thought of having a multi-purpose slash sports is just having a large like multi-use facility where you could do your cultural events, your cultural performances, and in addition, have the flexibility to use it for sports, both youth and adult, with a, probably a focus on youth. But I, I think it was multi-age, right? Um, like all like Finley is it's absolutely yeah. so all yeah. of our programming we try to we try to create um, programs and um, for uh, youth senior tots everybody so perfect no age restrictions Don why don't we move forward and we can talk about some of those other activities that might be there So I'll, I'll continue with recreation. And so the next question is asking you which spaces in the facility you would use, uh, a space that supported sports and active recreation, uh, classroom, enrichment classes, uh, art classes, anything that can be in uh, a classroom type setting um, for uh, lifelong learning to after school programs, kind of this multi-use, multi-purpose classroom uh, to the community celebrations and event spaces. And so this is kind of another way of us asking that question, um, you know, kind of trying to look at it from two angles as what activities do you want to do at the facility? Uh, then we have community performances, Next slide looks at dance and fitness studio, anything from yoga to Tai Chi to boot camp uh, to ballet classes to cultural dancing. Um, it could be all supported in there or a visual art classroom. And then one of the things that has been collected as community input and community interest is having a community resilience and resource space. So a space that really uh, supports emergency preparedness, supports uh, community businesses, things, just uh, providing additional resources and a place to support those community needs. And then preschool, early childhood, recreation, activity spaces um, that can be anything from, you know, a two hour program to a special program for mommy and me, music classes, dance classes. Um, and it's just a space that is designed for the younger age group, kind of the preschool age group, and therefore does require some special furniture, restroom accommodation, things like that, that makes it, it can be multi-use, but it is a little bit more specific in its design. And Patricia? Um, yes, I'd also heard that the community was hoping to have some kind of a access to media, radio, video. I don't know if that's a library project or a multicultural center project, um, but I, and also, services being able to get access services and i'm not seeing where that fits in these options yeah 
Erica? Um, yeah, so that's something that we have been doing in Santa Rosa with PEG. These are grant funds. And so I think that would be a library, uh, a library activity. Like there are East Street Studios at Central Library. Great, thank you, Erica. Dom, is there anything else on here? Or do we want to jump into our poll? Um, no, I think we can go into the poll. Yeah. So again, kind of like we did with the library, thinking about which of these that we just sort of went through uh, feels most appropriate for you. Which would you use? Which would be your priority? It's interesting to watch the shifting results, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to watch them bounce around. Yeah. And things that we've talked about with the community resiliency and resources is kind of just having the space serve kind of a multitude of uh, needs in the community from a cooling center to a heating center to a reconnection location to having access to wi-fi as well as information education and programs um, so nice to see that one pop right up to the top there Any other questions or comments on these? Great, okay. Uh, so the, the next option we wanted to talk about is, is another one of our sort of A, B uh, questions, which, which addresses aquatics. Um, so sort of thinking about this in two ways. One is, is an aquatic center with six lanes and a 3,000 square foot recreational pool. So that is great for um, everyday lap swimming, uh, swim lessons and, and your, your average sort of recreational water play. Um, the other option, option two, which is a bit larger, would be an eight lane lap pool, which not only does well for, for everyday swimming, but also would allow it to, to host competitive swimming. So um, my understanding right now is that the high schools all kind of uh, share resources. Uh, so this would put another pool into service <clears throat> for those uses. Um, now, the, the thing about this is, as you know, the, the right side says at Southwest Community Park. So as, as Don uh, kept referring back to the, the six acres that we have and using that as best we can, uh, we feel like if we want to create space for this larger uh, aquatic center, that that would probably find its way onto Southwest Community Park rather than being located uh, at the Hearn Community Multicultural Hub. So as I was saying to our group before we started, do you want a big pool or a bigger pool? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Pamela, you got a question? In making this selection, how does that impact budget? And is there money to do a big one at the other location? And does that, like, what does one afford the other? And can we afford either? <laughs> So right now, the, the project is looking at, at how we phase uh, this and, and be budget conscious all the way through. So I, I do think that, that part of this is thinking about how we phase the aquatic center. So um, I don't know if we want to speak, uh, Cameron, specifically about budget in this meeting or, or if this is more about visioning. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're at the visioning stage, um, you know, that we're, we're looking for that community response, and we're trying to understand what the community needs are, right, and, and so that's helping us to define the scope, and the scope will help us to set the budget on the process project, and um, so that's kind of where we are with the project budget. Um, we have some funding available, and we're actively pursuing more funding. Great. Thank you. Um. Yeah, Wendy. Um, I'm 
wondering if it makes any difference in the size of the pool. I, I'm really interested in getting aqua aerobics classes like they do at Finley Center, but having them here, is that something that is being taken into consideration too? Yes, Jackie, I don't know if you wanna jump back in here. Sure, um, uh, both pools would have uh, adequate space to offer water aerobics and water fitness courses. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, why don't we jump ahead? Okay, so so this is one of my more favorite uh, parts of these kind of of meetings, which is talking about about site opportunities and design values. So um, the the way we like to think about this is not so much as what do you want it to look like, but how do you want the landscapes and the buildings at the Hearn Community Multicultural Hub to reflect the values of your community? Uh, so we, we, we're we going to think about this both from a site perspective. So what are those spaces around and in between the buildings? I heard you know you mentioned the, uh, the, the desire for an amphitheater that would be great for sort of this outdoor performance component. Um, you know, we talked at the top about the multi-use path as something that connects to the, the, the city's broader network of, of, of cycling and pedestrian networks, um, the potential for, for using uh, the landscape as a, as a learning opportunity, uh, and then just creating spaces for those everyday outdoor activities. You know, the, the, if, if the outdoor performance is the thing that happens, you know, once a month, once a quarter, once a week, the outdoor activities are the things that are there every day. Uh, so going ahead. And then, you know, as I mentioned, our, our, our very flat site is a, is a great opportunity for outdoor recreation of, of any kind. Um, we, we've heard from certain community members uh, of an interest in handball courts. Uh, and then thinking again of, of those sort of special spaces that could uh, house markets and fairs. Uh, and, and everybody knows that, that food brings people together. Uh, so the opportunity for, for food trucks on the site um, would be something that we'd be interested in exploring. So. Um, any, any questions about any of these before we, oh, there's one more, I forgot. There's so many site opportunities. I can't even keep them all straight. Uh, you know, partnering with that, that idea of, of resiliency and bringing city resources to the site, uh, may, maybe opportunity for mobile health services. Uh, we've heard from previous feedback about a, a particular regional interest in car clubs and shows, um, a, a great way of, of turning a parking lot into a, a real asset. And then again, just sort of that everyday outdoor seating, soft spaces, third spaces for, for people to, to gather. So. so let's see what you all think. Let's go next. And this is in one of those for vote vote for as many as you want, but which, which would be your priorities for site elements uh, that, that you feel like would fit well in this community? Paula has a question there. Yeah, Paula. Um, just a question about the the uh, health services. Would that be like a mobile thing that comes in ever so often, or is this something that you want to do stationary? I, I think we're thinking of it as mobile, as as sort of creating a space that could accommodate it, but that it wouldn't be a permanent part of the site. Thanks. This is great to see. So, what what kinds of markets and fairs? I'm seeing a, a spike there. Uh, would would suit well for this site that that, that maybe the the Roseland community doesn't have a space for right now. I was imagining the um, entrepreneurial efforts of so many people that live in Roseland that they could have an opportunity to sell things that they've made or things services that they do and have a simple way to showcase that. That's easy to pop up and have a pop-up market. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Pamela. Any of these others really uh, spark somebody's interest or have a particular idea of, of, of what they love to see on the site? The reason I didn't 
pick car club, even though I think Roseland, it would be great to have that somewhere. I'm concerned about the space being adequate for such a thing. And uh -huh. maybe that's a different location. So I understand that a uh, low rider culture and all those things really popular there, but perhaps this is not the right location for it. Um, and then I do, I did hear in a lot of the interviews I did in the community about, um, and it's certainly in Mexican culture, having these central plazas in their towns, and they really loved having the central plaza as a meeting place in the evening for families to go to and see their neighbors. So I was envisioning to have something like that. And that's what that um, outdoor performance space and outdoor seating seemed to lean into a little bit. Um, mm -hmm certainly with some gardens around it to make it lovely, but uh, that kind of thing. That's awesome, thank you. We also have a typed response for the markets and fairs. Um, the suggestion was farmer's market. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one, Lo love that. All right. Let's go to our uh, next one. Wendy. Wendy oh, sorry, Wendy. Up too. Yeah, that's okay. Um, one of the things I would request, because. I love the idea of educational gardens, is that any plants that are planted, if there could be a signage as to what that plant is, because I love learning about some plants that I don't know about and one in my garden. Definitely, I like that, Wendy, thank you. Anything else before we jump ahead? Great, thank you. So then our, our, our last or next to last question is about building design value. So as I, as I mentioned before, uh, trying to think of this, not necessarily as what's your aesthetic preference, um, but what, what do you think fits best in the community? What do you think reflects the community's values? So, um, you know, that could, that could be, you know, something that, that we, we could call timeless or something that's maybe a little bit more of a background building um, that, that is, is functional, gets the job done, but isn't necessarily making a statement. Um, you know, I think when we think about buildings that are warm and inviting, those are those, are those that, in, that invite that, that same kind of hanging out that, that you talked about with the plaza space and, and using nature and color to, to interject life and vibrancy into the architecture and the spaces around it. Um, the next slide. So, you know, do you want a building that's flooded with natural light that has great indoor outdoor spaces that really ties itself into the land? Or do you, do you feel like, and, and these are not necessarily either ors, but, you know, it does does the building in contrast maybe with that, that timeless background building want to be a landmark and want to want to be sort of big and bold and different and, and say something, you know, with that architecture about uh, this particular uh, community in Santa Rosa. So, um, any, any, I know that these are, these are sort of, uh, can, can be a little bit squishy, but any, any questions about, about any of these before we uh, do the poll? Or if okay. anybody has any suggestions of buildings yes. that they think are reflective, you could type it in the Q&A or call it out for us. I think that's always very helpful as well. Thank you, Don, yeah. Yeah, so what building characteristics would you like to see incorporated in the new center? And, and again, this is one where, you know, to choose all that apply. There's nothing to say that a building can't be both warm and inviting and bold. Yeah, this is great. I think I think we could have. Um, I, 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 one thing that I sort of sort of buried the lead is I'm I'm sitting in my home in Lexington, Kentucky, where we have four very distinct seasons 
And the idea that, that you can live outside year round was something that, that I, I love getting to come to California communities where the idea that, that you could be indoors and outdoors and be nature inspired and, and have that inside outside living year round is just, uh, you all don't know how lucky you are, um, or maybe you do. Um, but uh, but I love to see that that sort of nature inspired natural lighting indoor outdoor warm and inviting uh, that, that all feels really at home with the, the, the what we've seen of Santa Rosa so far so um, any anything specific that that uh, that, that really jumps out uh, to anyone. I, I have one comment yeah, that I would really, really like um, that. The I don't remember what it's called, but dark sky lights. I don't remember mm, what, so yeah. that you're not so that the lights are going down and not up into the sky and creating a big glare, glare in this whole area. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, uh, yeah, we we uh, you're right. They've got lots of names: dark sky, full cutoff, whatever you want to call it. But but yes, I, I think that's um, uh, not only our best practice, but but absolutely right for this this kind of community. Yeah, Patricia. Yeah, I'd like to see a preference um, when the buildings are built to use local art and local and reference local geography and local history and local culture. That's, yeah. that's great that you mentioned that, Patricia. The one building um, that has the mural inside it is one in San Jose that a local graffiti artist this was his first professional commission <laughs> and he has since taken off and now is a professional artist, which is fabulous. He came from that neighborhood. Good suggestion. Yeah, Paula. Um, I, vo I, I voted one of my votes was for colorful. And what I meant by that is that there are many different cultures in this neighborhood area in the Southwest area. And I would like to see somehow referencing all the different um, communities that are here, the different cultures that are here, because there's quite a few in this area of Santa Rosa. So that's why I put colorful. That was my thought there. Thanks. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you for 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 giving us that further color uh, on your comment. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's great. And any way that we can can do that would be fantastic. Yeah, Pamela. What she just said is one of the things I was going to say when we did those interviews of different stakeholders, every single one that I interviewed said it needed to be colorful and needed. And one of the things about being welcoming is you see yourself in the space. So if mm. iconography or shapes or colors or patterns reflect the different cultures that live there or um, depend on that place, um, that's one of the elements that makes it welcoming. Yeah, that's that that's yeah, really, really fun. I think uh in especially in public architecture, we get to do a lot of like everything's stainless steel or everything's aluminum. It's, it's nice to do a colorful building every once in a while. That's great. Well then let's go to our last slide, um, which is something that we <laughs> always try to do. I think someone beat me to it. Uh, hopefully this isn't everybody's feeling, but we did want you to put in what's one word uh, that that, uh, that you're feeling about the project right now. Uh, I'm sorry if someone feels like this is poor outreach. We're trying to do our best. Uh, please come to more of them. Uh, it'll get better. Yeah, Patricia. Yeah, that was me. Um, I can't help not mention that the notice of this meeting was on Friday. And with all the effort that went into this technology and the colors and the number of people uh, representing the project that are here, why the heck did you not give us more time to do outreach? I mean, I'm really disappointed in that part. I hear you, Patricia, and, and, and that's why the, the, the slide right after that is about how many more opportunities there will be. This isn't the only uh, the, the only step in, in the process, and, uh, and we look forward to doing much, much more and, and, and getting more voices involved. But I appreciate your candor nonetheless, I really do. Um, and, and, and I appreciate everybody's uh, 
<clears throat> input there. Yes, we're, we're trying to be inclusive. I'm, I'm glad you're, you're staying curious about this project uh, and, and that you've had a chance to, uh, to get introduced to it. Uh, so if we'll go to our next slide. Yeah, so we'll just, uh, I, think, I think we can run through these pretty quickly just to, to recap. So um, thinking of the library as, as inhabiting those core spaces and then uh, really creating some convening space for, for local organizing, uh, for, for local groups that might just be getting off the ground. Going forward. Next. And then I think, of, yeah, a, a preference for uh, the community event space, um, and, uh, and, and those, those cultural aspects, um, trying to, uh, go ahead. And then really thinking about, yeah, that, that building that community resilience, providing access to services and, and media and, uh, and, and giving people that opportunity and that place for, for celebration and performance. Um, that that's all, all really fantastic going ahead. Uh, bigger pool, better. Hear you loud and clear there, uh, and, and I think a, a really important point there about uh, about letting the uh, letting the community preferences drive both design and budget and phasing. So we look forward to incorporating that. Going next, and then finally talking about our our site and our building. So uh, creating space to, to uh, I love that that idea about ca capturing that entrepreneurial spirit, giving uh, local local people an opportunity and a space to, to convene and to, to show off their, their art or their uh, business ideas and, and give them that foothold uh, to maybe grow that into, into something uh, new and different. Um, going ahead. And then, yeah, love the idea of um, building these buildings around the, 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 the multicultural uh, aspects of the community, referencing and reflecting those cultures uh, wherever we can. Okay. Next. Yeah, so then things to look forward to. Um, so this is our first round of two rounds of community engagement. This will extend through the holiday. Um, and then we'll come back in the fall and that'll be a time when we'll have um, more concrete ideas about uh, what, what's going on to the site. Uh, and, and we'll look for, for feedback about, um, about how, the, how all those things fit together. Uh, and then you'll be able to, to track the, the process, progress of the project uh, through the next couple of years and, until hopefully it, it opens to create acclaim and all of your presence at the ribbon cutting. So next. And then uh, if you or your friends and family want to get further involved, there is additional outreach going on uh, this very week. Um, as we mentioned, there's an online survey which replicates uh, a lot of what we talked about today. Um, there are iPad uh, and paper surveys at the Finley Community Center and the Roseland Regional Library. And then we do have an in-person version of this same presentation, um, a, a, a um, a more formal version at Roseland Elementary uh, Thursday at 6.30. Before that, we'll be at the Matoti Food Park uh, with our, our intercept boards, which you can see down there on the bottom picture. These are some shots from um, the night market, which we attended last Wednesday and got about 250 people uh, engaged in the process. So um, we, we look forward to, to having lo lots more opportunities to talk with the Santa Rosa community about this really special project. And, and we really do thank you all for, for the time. I'm glad we had a, a, an intimate group to have really uh, open discussions. So thank you all so much for, for being here. Uh, any, any last thoughts from, uh, from the city team or, or last questions? Wendy, sorry. Thank you. Um, I just want to know as I think about as we're heading in December, there'll be things like it'll be held used as a cooling center, correct? Yes. And Don nod. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ray. Sure. Um, I just wanted to um, talk about the process, the, you know, the the arc that we're we're on. I don't know where we are exactly on the arc. I hope we're past the midpoint. Uh, but there have been thousands of inputs so far over the last two or three years to this. 
if you think about the library's reimagining plan, our facilities plan, the work that began probably a decade ago on Southwest Community Park, that's all being input into this. Um, I share Pat's concern that there's not a lot of people here. That That is concerning to me too, but I also know that we have been asking people and talking to people and meeting with people just on this site alone for more than a year. Um, and it may be that people feel heard, um, you know, that they, they feel like they've weighed in. I don't know. Uh, I, I can't read everybody's mind in Southwest Santa Rosa, but um, I do appreciate the work that's being done. Um, I was glad to hear that there's um, a lot of activity on the survey, so people are weighing in. And, um, and I hope everyone here stays engaged and brings a couple friends next time. Absolutely. Thanks, Ray. Or sense your neighbors for Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be at other Wednesday night markets or was that just last week? So um, we're scheduled for, we, we extended it just to get through the weekend over two weeks for this online survey, the in-person opportunities, iPad kiosk and the paper surveys. Um, you know, we can talk with the city. Uh, there's no hard out that we definitely need to hit right now. So if it's extended a week, um, I think it's just about resources and money, actually, to be frank. I mean, it is expensive. Um, the online survey, the promotion of that has gone pretty well. Um, right now we have over 200. At the night market, we had 250. We'll be at Matodi on Thursday afternoon, expecting to get a quite a bit of turnout. People actually really enjoy engaging with the boards, probably more than a Zoom meeting or an online survey. They're really drawn to it. Um, and it's the same in put opportunity. Um, and then we do have the paper survey too that's in both languages and is easy to do and collect the data that way. So any suggestions, definitely welcome. I'm just um, wondering if you're, are you mobilizing volunteers so that they can you can schedule them to help get the word out or, or pairing with the local community organizations. So in addition to the library, which is assisting very closely with the outreach by the city, um, we have reached out to the Boys and Girls Club as well. Um, but that is as far as the effort has for the partnership. Um, I think we have sent emails to, sorry, school go ahead, Pamela. School district, the school district community uh, engagement people. Like I'm thinking about my friend, General Del Rosario, who is the community engagement person for Roseland University Prep. Like people like um, no, the school district, I think we were, uh, Jamie, I don't know if she's still here, trying to have them participate and um, get us up on their um, marker board outside the school for that. I'm not sure if that happened or not, but that was, uh, Jamie's efforts were going for that, um, okay. so. All right, excellent. Well, thank again, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, we hope you have a great evening and, and we look forward to talking with all of you more about the project as it goes along. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for this everyone. opportunity. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you everyone. Thank you.